Hey, just thought I'd make a tutorial for New Game Plus in Boneworks speedrunning. Um, yep, yeah, so I'll get straight into it. So, for the options, generally you'll want your height slightly smaller than what your real life height is. Um, I'm 183, I'd usually just keep it at the default 176. Or if I go a bit smaller, it can make some things easier, like jumping and stuff like that with real life movements. Um, but bear in mind that the smaller you make it, you know, the faster you can move in game by like moving your head, but also the weirder the game that gets. For example, your arms, they can only stretch out so far in the game. If you have your height set really small, you'll be able to stretch your real life arms way further. So it'll feel like, you know, like you're a T-Rex and you've only got tiny little arms. So it's weird to play the game like that, but yeah, you want to... A little bit smaller than real life maybe 10 centimeters um, for floor offset you also want that I'd say about 10 to 15 centimeters um, different so I'll see right there that 15 is my real life height um, like just pressing auto guess and I'm standing up fully right now you can see on the the um, in the corner that shows my headset the blue dot is my standing height in real life <clears throat> so yeah 15 centimeters but I set it to about 15 centimeters um, higher which means that you're kind of if you look down um, and you're fully standing up Ford will be on his tippy toes um, you can tell the sort of place you want to set it because when you go up, you can see that you're raising in the game, but then at a certain point it just stops. So, about where it stops, which is around here, you know, but close enough. Um, yeah, so setting this will make jumping, super jumping, a lot easier, which is the main reason why I want to do that. In terms of other options, um, things like Gunfly require a high frame rate, so depending on your computer you'll probably want to turn these down um, audio doesn't matter you can turn the music down if you want controls these also don't matter heaps for example for me I actually don't use turn mode at all because I play wirelessly on the quest um, so I just turn around in real life and I never use the virtual turn on the stick um, but you know, it's perfectly fine to use snap turn or smooth turn. Um, snap turn 45 will let you do one type of gu gun flying, which, you know, you don't need it, but it can be, um, helpful in certain situations. And also you can do that type of gun flying without it, but yeah, I'll talk about that later. Turn rate 10, obviously why would you want to turn slow in a speed run? For locomotion curve, holes is the default. And it's what a lot of people use, it's fine. Um, it means that you can't strafe sideways as fast, though. Actually, let me just check that. I don't know, maybe you can strafe sideways as fast. But it's just... Um, what it does is, if your stick is pointing up or down, then if you move it slightly side to side, it doesn't really... Um, move the move forward side to side much doesn't strafe um, very much until you go all the way to the side and then yeah then you can strafe um, poles is useful if you want to um, you know like if you have to stand on a narrow ledge for example um, it's a lot easier to run without a small movement of the joystick throwing you off but I usually play on linear anyway, so whatever you prefer, the other settings don't matter. Spectator, you probably want to keep that disabled just for the frame rate. Okay, so that's it. Um, the other thing is you'll probably want to get the 100% save from speedrun.com so that, you know, when you're messing around you have the, um, you can use the Nimbus gun and stuff. 
And also you can, um, you have all the ammo so that you can buy guns for gun flying, which is very important in New Game Plus. So to get started with, first level break room. Ah, oh, well before break room, you have this cutscene, you just press skip, but if you press it too quickly, then it'll soft lock. Um, so it's like, on the live split timer, the fastest you can get is about 1.6 seconds. Um, if you do any faster, it'll soft lock, and then you have to leave this door and then jump down there and there's a trigger to go to the next level. Um, so yeah, I said 1.6 is the fastest that you can get. That's at um, my refresh rate of 120 hertz. At different refresh rates, it's a different amount. Slower refresh rates, the fastest you can get is like 2 point something seconds. So, um, yeah, you probably want to set your refresh rate as high as possible as well for phone wax. That's another important setup. Um, yeah, 120 will is good if you have like a quest or something. 144, you know, slightly better. But yeah, 120 is enough to do all the tricks that you see in the world record speedrun. Um, okay, so for break room, you just push your hands down like that, run forwards, and then also crouch at the same time to get over. Pretty easy. I don't know if I even need to explain that. So this level's pretty basic. You know, you just run to the end. It's pretty obvious. Um, but one thing that I will explain is B-hopping, um, because this is the first trick um, that you'll need. I'll explain each trick as we come across them. So for B-hopping, what you do is, um, first of all, um, if you look in the bottom left corner of the video, that's showing my speed right now. So 4 meters per second is Ford's running speed. Um, and the first thing you do, you can do for b-hopping is just jump. Even if you don't do anything special, if you jump every now and then, you can see it goes faster. But to go even faster for b-hopping, you want to be crouching slightly in real life, not with virtual crouch, because virtual crouch will make you move slower. But in real life, you crouch till your head is about level with this green laser in museum. And now, if I run and jump, you can see that my speed is getting up to 6 meters per second. <coughs> um, yeah, so the next thing after that that you want to do is get the right timing. So this part takes a little bit of practice, but it's fine because you can just, you know, practice it while you do runs. Because there's no negative penalty to getting bee hopping wrong. It just means you won't go as fast as you could. But you'll always be faster than not bee hopping. So you should just always do it, really. Um, so, first of all, slow bee hopping. So the way that I time this, once again I'm crouching, same height as before. And you're holding down jump the whole time, except for when you need to jump again. Then you very quickly release and tap it again, like that. And the way I'm timing it is just jump, and then right as I hit the ground, I release and tap again. So this, it's slow bee hopping, because um, the amount of jumps I'm doing is slow. Not because it's a slow movement tech. Um, for fast bee hopping, it's the same thing, but you just do more jumps and maybe crouch slightly lower. And you go about the same speed, maybe a little bit faster than the slow bee hopping, but it's like barely different, so you don't really need to worry about that at all. Um, either one should be basically fine to do. And now the next thing is big bee hopping, which is doing real big jumps. 
So you need to, as you do a B hop, you do a kind of jump in real life. The bigger your real life jump, the better, obviously. But, you know, it's really tiring to do that. So when I'm doing this, I usually just do a like fake jump. Like in real life, I crouch down and then quickly rise up. But my toes never leave the ground. I just, yeah. Um, it's kind of tiring, but that is the one of the fastest ways to move around. Um, and the reason why it's faster, by the way, is because when you jump in the game, um, like the jumping mechanic pushes you forward a little bit. And when you crouch down, it pushes you forwards even more. This is like the optimal most amount of push that you get. So that's why B-hopping makes you faster, but the reason why doing big jumps makes you faster is because Ford has like his on-ground movement, max speed 4 meters per second, but when he's in the air, you can use the left thumbstick to move around in the air, and your aerial movement speed can go way faster than your on-ground speed. So, yeah, when you're in the air, um, you can continue accelerating past your running speed, which, if you watch that again, see, while I'm in the air, it's just going faster and faster. Um, but that's still not the fastest way to move. Um, if you actually do a lunge slightly forward as you jump off the ground, then you'll, you know, you go a bit further. So, there's that. And then you can even combine it with slow-mo. Obviously you lose a little bit of time because you're activating slow-mo but you gain that back with how fast you go because when you let go of slow-mo you're moving pretty fast if you look at the top speed in the parentheses there so you got to 8.3 just then so you move a lot faster than normal be hopping and you can um, way of traveling that is that we know of uh, one thing also is that from the rules in speedrun.com, you're not allowed to abuse your play space. Otherwise, people with like, huge warehouses to do the speedruns will have an unfair advantage. So, you want to stay in the same spot in real life. Which is why every time I do one of these lunges, I just come back while I'm in the air to the spot that I'm at. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. I'd recommend just starting with like, you know, the normal bee hopping like this or the fast one. And then, yeah, if you want, you can do this. By the way, this is the same thing as a slow bee hopping. Just jump and hold the jump down again and then the moment you hit the ground you do another jump. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about um, bee hopping, except actually there is one more technique which we need to talk about, where there's your, the, um, the crouch stick bee hop, which is where you don't jump at all, you don't use the um, in-game jump button, but you just crouch to the same b-hopping height, the laser over there, and then you do a quick crouch and then uncrouch. And it does a little jump and you can see that um, I get to around 4.8 speed. Uh, the reason is because at the start of break room, the game doesn't let you jump. You can't use the jump button, so this is the only way you can b-hop. Um, once again, it's just 
crouching and then uncrouching causes you to do a tiny little jump. And the timing for that is you want to go like da 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 da. That's down up, down up, down up, down up, and resetting to the middle um, in between. And you want it to be a quick movement. You you never you don't want to slowly move down then up. You want it to flick the stick down up, down up, down up. So something like that. And now to bring these tricks back into break room to show you how it's done with them. This is what it looks like. Get over this, and then down up, down up, until you get to there, open that, crouch under that, down up, down up, down up, down up. Ah, oh, my snap turns on, obviously. Um, I'm used to having that off, so I'm just going to turn that off quick. And now, once you press that button there, you can B hop. So I'm doing the normal B hop, the slow variation of B hop. And you do it um, right here. You don't need to jump in real life, but just an uncrouch in real life will give you a bit more height and that'll let you clear that. So, to show that again, it's just normal bee hopping here and then uncrouch and jump at the same time to do that. So that brings us on to the next level museum. So a museum's just a lot of running, you know, just bee hop in the normal way, do that or whatever, all the way to um, later up ahead. There is another trick you can do here to fling to the end. So instead of running and just going around that corner, you run over here and you want to line up so that you're on this little um, cross here. Maybe slightly in front, but about here, like in this corner of the square really. And then in real life, or you can virtually do this as well, but using the stick it's hard to precisely aim. So I just do it in real life. So I jump over here and crouch in real life and you want your hand to be like a finger's length away and holding like this um, because you can actually grip the thing from here and see how it slides your hand forwards that's all you want to abuse because the game slides it forwards really fast and if you slow down time to three times slow-mo it still moves just as fast see that click at the end where it just like boom so you want to slow down three times, crouch so that you're eye level with the thing and you're in the corner of this square, and then grip it and like that. Um, I probably don't need to spawn a Nimbus gun because... I'm only going to show this one more time, I think, but... Um, yeah, so once you feel it pull your body, or like pull your body fast, it might pull your body a little bit as your hand comes over, but then later on it'll do a really fast fling, then you need to let go. If you let go too early, then, you know, you're not going to do the full jump. Um, yeah, so, is there anything else I need to say about this? I don't know if there is. Higher refresh rate will make you go further, so it's another benefit to higher refresh rates. You generally just want your refresh rate high all the time. Um, yeah. I don't think there's anything else I need to say there. I might just grab the Nimbus gun though. So this is all just, you know, bee hopping through here. Cutting the corners as close as possible, obviously. 
once you get to here. Um, because it's a ramp upwards, you'll get more height when you jump. So generally I just jump and do one jump off this and another jump there to get over this weird little... Yeah, it's pretty annoying. If you don't jump in the right spot, you'll get stuck a little bit. But, um... Yeah, also, whenever I do a big jump, I just go forwards a little bit. Like, in real life, I move my head forwards just to get a tiny bit more speed. Because why not? Over here, jumping forwards again, and now jump onto here, and that was a really bad example, but you want to jump onto this and then do a big jump up, to, and you'll just clear that. So, like, you know, with practice, you'll find the right spot, but it's right about there in the middle of this thing, this, like, square on the side that I'm looking at. Like that. And now from here, um, I mean, like, you can just go the normal way muse through museum that way, but this is one trick you'll probably, or like, almost certainly want to do, because this will just be so much faster than doing it the other way. But valve fly, when you um, come over here, grab the valve. It doesn't really matter which way you grab it. You can fly both ways. I tend to just, like, it's sitting like that, and I just grab it there and do this. Um, and you want your hands, like, you know, two, two rungs between them. So not like this, because it's really hard to fly like that. But like this. And to fly, all you do is just put this bit right in front of my eyes right now, under the chin, and pull up. But see how it's pushing me backwards? You'll probably want to look down a little bit, and that'll let you go forwards. Um, you, it takes a bit of practice to get the feel of it, um, but yeah, that's all you do. And you don't want to push too hard in any direction. If you push forwards too hard with your arms, then it'll just come out of your head, from under your head. And if you push backwards too hard, then it'll get stuck on your neck, like right now it is, and I can't get it out. Which, that's pretty annoying, obviously, and you don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. And crouching slightly will make it a little bit easier to hook onto your head as well. So usually when I'm in the air, I'll crouch. Um, yeah, so you just fly over to this button. If you're good, you can land right on it. Then here, you just stand on it for a few seconds, and that'll give you enough time to just b-hop under the door. Obviously, the length of time depends on how fast your b-hopping is. But if you're really fast, I'll wait for it to reach the bottom. If you're really fast, you just stand on for like a second and then you can go. Um, that wasn't even that fast, but yeah. So you continue going through here, and then you want to fly up, and you want to be on this ledge right here. Okay, so, um, also, obviously, you know, you could do it any way you want, but the way I usually fly is when I come around the corner, I let myself touch on the ground here, and then from here, fly forwards, um, because that way it's, you know, I do the same thing every time, so it's more controlled, and instead of just, like, randomly flying all around. So I just land on the ground, and then I can easily fly forwards and in that direction. And I do a jump to get my feet off the ground. This thing can be pretty annoying. Like right then it got stuck in the um, fluorescent bulb. That's a thing which can happen. It's, you know, there's not much you can do about it. Once it happens though, you're kind of stuck. Because I don't think there's a way to get this out of there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty annoying. I guess I have to restart the level. <laughs> it doesn't happen that often though, um, when I'm doing actual attempts.
So I'll just real quick get back there again and show the... I'll show the um, whole flying sequence. So I'll land on that button, go under there, go down here, land, then jump and go up, and then turn around and into here. So once you're in here, we want to clip out of bounds and then fly directly to the level end trigger. The way you clip out of bounds here, keep holding this the whole time, the valve, just walk forwards into here, turn sideways, and then crouch. Also, sprint forwards while you're doing this to make it easier to jump out. And your body will be out, so you, like, it's really easy to get your body out, but usually the valve gets stuck in. Let go of the valve with one hand to make it, you know, like get your hand out, which will make it more likely for the valve to come out. This takes is taking more time than normal, but I'm sprinting sideways right now and just looking in this direction, and now I'm out. And then once you're out, you need to pull up a little bit on your head, not too hard because remember it'll just pull the valve off your head and fly towards the level end trigger which is at the bottom of this pipe just over there. And so yeah, look down, pull forwards and you'll go, in, go forwards. But again don't pull too hard, just pull like slightly further than you are. So for streets, um, if you're facing forwards, then you're actually going to be looking at the side of this pipe. You want to turn 90 degrees to the left before you start the level. Um, turn in real life, that is. And then hold down walking forwards so that um, by the time the level actually loads in, you're actually over here and falling down there. Because you have like a second or two before the level starts where you can actually control forward before yeah, you get your vision. So you start like falling down here, and then in the air, sprint sideways. So you land out here. So this way is for the gunfly, which is the consistent, but harder and slightly slower route. Or um, there is also the boss claw, which is this way. I think my refresh rate, I'll just check it real quick, but yeah, so right now my refresh rate is 120 hertz. Um, if you're above 90 hertz, you cannot do the boss claw. So that's another reason why um, speedrunners go that way these days. But at 90 hertz, you can go this way, where it's pretty like chance, it's like a quarter, maybe a third chance of getting a good run. But the rest, you know, you could take literally forever if you're really unlucky. Um, yeah. So because my refresh rate is at 120, I can't show you that one for the moment. But this way, as you fall, you sprint this way so you land here. And then you want to run this way. I usually jump over this container, but you can go around or whatever. So go this way jump over this, you can go here and do a super jump over there. So I haven't explained super jumps yet, but basically, um, like when I was talking about bee hopping, if you uncrouch in real life or do a little jump in real life at the same time as you do a jump in the game, you go higher than if you just jump in the game. Um, and if you hold down the slow motion button at the same time, then you will go even higher. Um, what I just showed was a really bad super jump, but yeah. And then if you go two times slow mo, that's about the highest you can jump with two times. Um, so the timing, you want to like start. Cr I'm crouching in real life right now, and then while I'm uncrouching. Um, like halfway through my, you know, my jump in my real life jump, while I'm on crouching, I release the button, and when doing it with slow mo, 
um, I'll hold down slow-mo the whole time and then halfway through release jump and then after I've released jump I'll release slow-mo basically for the maximum height you want to release slow-mo at the height of your real-life jump so like that um, the higher you jump in real life the higher you go in the game obviously um, yeah that's pretty much it but with like your height faked a little bit so my height is um you know when I set at the start my in-game height to lower than my real life height just doing an uncrouch is to the game it appears like a little jump so a lot of the time you can get away with not actually jumping in real life just doing a thing like that where I you know my toes never leave the ground so that's how you can get over this with one times um, but you that is kind of high jump you probably do need to jump in real life to get over that like that um, and even if you don't make it all the way you can just pull yourself with your arms over so yeah um, you can get used to that with practice so you can go around there or I usually jump onto this and then jump over and you don't even need slow-mo if you do it that way and then do a one time slow-mo jump up here and now I want to buy this gun to gun fly so I you know open my inventory walk over so the inventory is in here and then you just spam the triggers your index fingers and that'll put the money in. Close that, open that, pull the gun out. And yeah, now I need to explain gun flying. So to, um, first you wanna glitch the magazine of the gun. To do that, you put it in. And then you want to pull the magazine out and then like a split second later, like literally a frame later, you want to let go of the gun so it's gonna be very fast like did him did him oh wait actually sorry this one's holding the gun it's like did him did him did him um yeah you you can do it without slow-mo but it's pretty inconsistent um you know three times slow-mo is obviously easiest but um, once you get some practice with it you can do it consistently with one time slow-mo but it, it's just like, da -dum, like that. Since I'm not using slow-mo right now, it's not going to happen consistently, but there, I, I just got it. Um, usually you just do the same thing, but with slow-mo. Um, so now the magazine's glitch, glitched, and what this means is that the game doesn't recognize that there's a magazine in here, even though there is one attached to the gun right now. And because it doesn't recognize the magazines in there, when you put stuff in your inventory, it's physically on you in the game. Like, right now the gun is on my back. And the reason it's I'm just getting pushed forward like this is because it makes the gun, turns off collision for the gun while it's on your back, but not the magazine, because it doesn't think the magazine's in the gun. So the magazine's on my back, pushing my chest collider forwards. Um, yeah. So that's basically the premise to why gun flying works, but controlling it is the next thing which takes a little bit of practice. There's a couple of ways you can do it, like you know just having it in your back will just push you. If you look to the right, you'll gain a little bit of height. Oh sorry, so if you put it on your right shoulder, then looking to your right will give you height. Um, if you put it on your left shoulder, then looking to your left will do the same thing. Um, because remember, this magazine is on your back, pushing into your chest collider here. There's just a square on your chest. And turning right, the gun and things in your inventory lag behind your body a little bit. Um, so when you turn, it pushes your chest further into the magazine, which causes the physics glitches more. So yeah, turning right. If you have snap turn, this is where you can snap to the right 
to do a quick turn to the right and give you height. Um, yeah. So this is, you know, a way to gun fly, but it's, you know, it's not the best. Like, you can control it pretty well. Every time you see that you start falling randomly, you just do it again um, to keep gaining height. But there's a faster way of flying called melon fly, which is where... Oh. How is this still shut? Oh, there's one on the top. Is there? Oh, I'm putting this way. That's embarrassing. Okay. Um, yeah, for melon fly, you want to put the gun on your back, the glitch gun, like normal. And then all you really need to do is just turn your head slightly to the right and at the same time go from fully uncrouched to crouching. And then you'll start flying backwards like this. And this is the fastest and most controllable way to fly. So you just sort of stay in the air and you can like turn pretty hard without it breaking as well. Turn too hard and it'll break though. But it's, you know, pretty hard to fall out of the sky, which is good. Assuming you have good FPS. That's the real struggle with this. Um, yeah. So, um, you can see when I was on the ground just before, it took me a couple of attempts like two attempts to start the gunfly um, like even just like crouching you know you can start a melon fly I didn't even turn my head but to do it consistently you want to turn your head um, maybe 45 degrees is what it takes to be consistent and also what helps is if you're um, already gun flying like the normal way like this you can go into a melon fly very easily. And also if you're sprinting in the direction that you want to be flying. So for me to start melon fly, usually I do this. I'll be running forwards in a direction. I put the gun on my back. And then once the gun's on my back, I, in real life, turn my head around that. Like do a 180 with my head, at the same time keeping my um, sprinting joystick facing the direction I want to go. So as I turn, the joystick also does a 180. Um, and then while I'm in the middle of doing my 180, I crouch. So, like that. And this is like basically 100% consistent. Um, but yeah, just remember you always need to be fully uncrouched. So that's something important to check before you start doing a melon fly. Um, the other thing I mentioned before is you need good FPS. Um, which kind of sucks because some levels in this game it is very hard to get good FPS. If you have bad FPS it'll be harder to start the melon fly and it'll just fall out of the sky as soon as you do. Um, yeah. Uh, what else to talk about? Okay, so another thing for melon fly, um, the way you control it, obviously you fly backwards, um, and you can see I'm accelerating right now, if you look at my speed. Um, yeah, if you find yourself like falling down, just, you know, uncrouch, and then crouch while turning your head, and it'll just start again. Um, but yeah, it goes backwards, um, all the time I'm sprinting in the direction to give me a little bit of extra speed in the direction I want to go, but it has a top speed, so I'll get this going. So now if you look, see I'm not getting much faster than 14.8, probably I'll top out at 15. Um, and this top speed depends on whether you're looking up or down and where you're, how crouched you are, I guess. Um, so for looking up and down, if you look straight ahead, you go faster, but you 
drop faster as well. If you look down, up to 90 degrees, if you go further, then the melon fly will just stop. Yep. But yeah, look down, 90 degrees, then you gain a lot of height, but you don't go very fast. It's like struggling to get to 13 right now. Um, yeah, whereas when I did this, you know, easily blows past 13. If I switch to looking down now, it slows down because looking down can't go that fast. But the other thing I said is your crouch height. Remember, because we set our uh, floor offset so that our just our full standing height in real life is actually forward on his tippy toes. Um, because we did that, our heads act, we're not actually like fully crouched right now. If you crouch to where your, um, you know, as if floor offside was zero, so you're at normal, Ford's normal standing height, then that's the fastest you can go with melon fly, basically. Um, so, if, actually, I just realized the better test is um, I'm going to try and keep myself level so I'm not rising and I'm not lowering either. I'm not falling. And we'll see how fast I can get um, flying like this. So I want to stay about there. So I'm going like 16. 16 and a half maybe. Alright. Now I'll do it in the opposite direction. But I'm going to return my floor offset to negative 15, the normal one. So my my actual real life height. And I'll try and keep that. And you can see I'm already going 17 while keeping at the same height. Just about 18. So yeah, if your height is... Oops, if your height is, um, your floor offset is faked, I'll go back to that, then you just need to crouch a bit in real life to the point. Don't crouch too far or you'll, um, the melon fly will just stop, but if you crouch the right amount, then you'll go the same speed. So if you crouch too far, I'll just show that as well further than this and I'm going to fall. Oh wow, I didn't. Okay. Uh, right there is where I fell, I guess. Yeah. See, it, I think it just happens when you reach a certain speed. Um, anyway, that's how you fly with a gun. So, to continue with the speed run, once you've done the gun glitch over there, another thing that I'll say is you can't do the gun glitch while you're moving for some reason. Um, once you grab the gun, you need to stop and do the gun glitch. Um, if you're falling or jumping or running or doing anything, you're just not going to be able to activate the gun glitch. Um, yeah. So, activate the gun glitch, run out here, then put it on your back and do a melon fly, go upwards, and then go against this wall. This will take you straight up. And then once you're over here, remember I'm crouching a bit for maximum speed. And then you want to fly to the finish. You can bounce off that wall if you want. Looking straight ahead for maximum speed and going downwards. And then if you do it well, you want to line up right with that door. So you fly backwards and then just let go right here and you go in. So that's how you do streets the gun glitch way. Okay, so runoff. Um, yeah, you just B hop over here, press the button. And now, 
um, from here. You can do the, you know, the old slow way, which is climbing up there. I guess I'll show it real quick. This is the easiest way to speed run this level. So you climb up here and then bonk your head into this glass to break it. And then carefully pull yourself over. And yeah, you just run down there and you can run around the side of the level all the way to the finish. Um, but I won't do that right now because I'll show you the faster way. There's actually two faster ways you can do it. Um, so first is with um, doing the wall. You can also do a gunfly, or you could do a combo of gun flying to the wall. But yeah, I'll just put this in my inventory for now. Because um, the first thing you want to do, whether you gun grab the gun or not, is to jump up there. So you can do this with a really big super jump. If you're good at it, you can jump like that and then grab this ledge which will break the window. You need to grab this ledge exactly. You can't push your hand through the window, so it's like right when your hand's here, you grab. Um, if you can't jump that high, there are other ways to get there, like you can jump off this and grab onto that, but this is more precise. You need to be pretty good with movement to do that. Um, or even like, you know, do a jump onto here and jump up to that one there so you don't waste any time. And then you can drop down there and grab the gun and go back if you want to. But yeah, for me, um, I can do this jump. So I just get to here, super jump up there. And then, yeah, once I'm up here, I'll wait for the gun to come out. You need to hang down because you need to, you can't grab the gun from up here. So hang down with one arm, grab the gun, and then climb up with it. And then there's a little, right here, there's a little invisible barrier which you need to jump over. And now once you're on here, there's two things you can do. Um, you can run along here. There's a small drop there, but just stay on this, otherwise you'll fall. And then do a super jump over that to clear that distance. And then go down here. And this is the RNG wall. Um, yeah, it's got weird collision on here for some reason. So you're like, what was that? But what you want to do is do a... Like just a like bigger than a you know normal game jump, but not a huge super jump. Like I'm just slightly jumping and slightly uncrouching in real life um, with three times slow mo activated before you start. Put your hand out. Um, I don't think it matters whether it's a fist or not. And then jump up. And then there's a certain spot on the wall where you hit it. And you go flying towards the finish. That was like perfect. I didn't want to go in there though. Um, because I'll show you the other way. Actually, I might just restart the level. Um, yeah, finding the spot on the wall. There's like some little markings or something, but yeah. Once you find it, it's pretty easy. So you just run through here. Once you get here, grab the gun, climb up. And now, oh, so I'm getting load lag for some reason. This never happens to me, so I'm surprised. Is it going to do it? I think it's okay. Okay, cool. 
Oh yeah, another thing I should say with the gun glitch is um, you need to wait for the mag to fully come out and then become glitched before you grab the gun again, which is why just then a couple of times I pulled it out, but then I grabbed the gun again, so it just went back in. Um, yeah, so it's not lagging anymore, so I'll show you the route. So crouch real life, get some speed by looking that way, and then just keep my head level with this thing. And on my machine at least, that gives me just enough FPS to stay in the air. And now I'll start... Oh. Okay, I spoke too soon. <laughs> but once I, I'm past that big wall, I can lower slightly to get over this one. And then continue lowering until here, and then just pull the gun out, fall down here. And the place you want to land is right there. Like, not on this room here, but slightly to the side. There is a floor just there. Um, which is slightly lower, and that'll trigger the end level. Um, so it's like starting about here, like pretty much to the end, I guess, but just to the side. And you want to land, it's about maybe that thick between my two hands. Um, so yeah, just land on that and you'll be good. Even if you just like, you know, nick it with your head as you're going down or something, but you don't want to miss it and go off the edge because you'll hit a level end trigger. Even if you graze the side, it can start loading to the next level. But then, if you're, if you don't stop your fall, and you, you're falling really fast, you'll hit the reset trigger before the next level loads, and it'll kill your whole run because the screen turns black, and you need to restart the game. But anyway. Okay. So for sewers, um, once again, gun glitch is what you want to do by buying this gun here. Um, I mean, there are other ways through the level, but they're a lot slower. Um, yeah, I won't worry talking about them for New Game Plus. So look up and then activate your inventory, and this thing will be higher in the air, so... It's like the perfect height for this. So, spam that. Grab this, do the gun glitch. Oops. So, as for getting out of here, there are a couple ways. This way is the easiest. It requires no thinking. You just put the gun on your back and you go into this corner. You want to be um, looking at this wall but slightly to the left as well, into the corner. And that's basically it. You just stand forwards, hold your hands here, close to you, and you sprint forwards. While the gun's trying to push you into the wall, eventually it'll just clip you out. But the higher your refresh rate, the rarer it is. So it's very luck dependent. Um, I usually move my stick like slightly left so I'm looking towards like my movement is towards the corner as well um but yeah that's pretty much all there is to it but it's so luck dependent oh so I'm out now and then you just do a melon fly to the finish um yeah it's a bit hard to fly because you can't see anything but you want to you can actually drop a fair bit, so you can keep the top of the level in your vision, but you don't want to go lower than that red door, so start looking down. That happens and keep your height there, keep going back, and right there's the finish. Um, so I'll just restart the level to show you another way. So again, when you spawn into sewers, you're facing this way, so you want to be looking 90 or a bit more to your right in real life when you start, and that way you'll start running towards here. Look up, buy the gun, do the glitch.
That took a few tries. Um, so here's the, another way you can do it. Um, this way is way more consistent, but it's... Um, I'll, I'll just kill these guys so they don't interfere. So this way is way more consistent, but also a lot harder to do than that. Um, for me, I can get like a sub minute time of sewers, maybe 75% of the time, but getting a good time, which is sub 45 for me, between 30 and 45 seconds, then that is maybe 25% of the time. Um, yeah. So to do this, put the gun in your inventory, so open your inventory up, put it there, so it's not pushing me around right now because it's not on my back, it's over there. Um, and then walk up to here, put this hand into a fist, because your hands being a fist makes it easier for them to clip out, because when they're not a fist, they're like this long, but as a fist, they're way shorter. Then grab the red light, between these two, um, like this brick here, in the middle of it, is where you grab the red light, and you want to be like, you know, standing up straight when you start this. And then now you sprint forwards in this direction and you tap the um, inventory button to close the inventory so the gun goes on your back and it starts pushing you. So all I'm doing right now is running forwards in this direction and I'm going to close my inventory now. So now it pushes like this and you saw for a second there it took me outside the level. Right now I'm at, well, I'm actually in this thing actually. But yeah, that's what happens. You go outside the level and then it pulls you back in pretty much straight away after. But for that moment when you're outside the level, that's when you want to let go of this red light and ideally stay outside the level. Once you let go of this, you'll be outside, most of your body will be outside the level, except you know, this hand, maybe this one if it didn't get out, and then you want to bring them back in. So this hand should already be a fist, you just um, pull this hand to fist after you've let go of the light, and then, you know, wave your hands around or whatever to try and get them out, all the while sprinting forwards that way. Um, if you're not sprinting forwards that way, then you'll probably get pulled into this little area back inside the level. Um, yeah, so, um, I think there's some other things that I should talk about here. So if you do get pulled back into this area, you just want to like crouch and, you know, sprint backwards and that'll cause you to melon fly out of there. Um, is there anything else? Sometimes, like, if you are, whether you're looking up or down, I usually look, like, down this way. This does affect how high, like, the melon fly pushes. If you look down, it pushes you up. You know, you look up, then it pushes you down. So sometimes you'll be holding onto the red light and you'll be, like, down here crouched. And melon fly can't push you out of bounds when you're crouched. So, you know, just look up a bit and that'll uncrouch you. Oh, sorry, look down a bit. That will make Melon Fly push you up and you'll uncrouch. Um, oh, yeah, the other thing I forgot to mention is when you grab this light, you don't want to grab it like this. You want your hand to be flat against this uh, brick here, like that, and grab it there. Um, if you grab it like that, then your hand will like be pulling your body more in inbounds, so that'll pull you back in. Um, that it? I think that's it to talk about for this thing, maybe. Um, I, some other things can happen, like sometimes you'll be like under the level, your head will be under, but both your hands are like stuck in there. Um, once again, you just hold them in a grip and you sprint backwards while um, your right thumbstick is up 
to uncrouch. And that should get you out of there consistently. Um, I don't know, there's a few other small things which I don't think really matter. Like there's a small gap here with no collision that you can pull your hand through, but generally you don't really have control over precise control of your hands because of the gunfly pushing you. Um, yeah, so I'll try and demonstrate this right now. Um, so I'm going to do the thing and then the moment I see my body go out out of bounds, I'm going to let go of the light. So let's go. Oh, actually, whoops. Um, I didn't, I want to go back in bounds. Um, okay, there we go. Um, there was one, one thing I forgot. When you're here and you're grabbing the light, you need your arm to be pointing backwards behind you like that. Um, if you don't do that, that will pull you back in bounds. Um, yeah, so um, straight out behind you and you'll stay out of bounds. <clears throat> so go in this direction to my right look up and open the inventory by the gun don't let that fling back up do the gun glitch put in inventory put my hand here because you don't want to grab the ammo which always happens if your inventory is not open when you um, fall on a fist, grab that flat there, um, sprint forwards, close inventory, hold my hand behind me, looking this way, go out, let go, and then pull your hands forwards and yeah, like use your index finger to form the fist so it's easier for you to pull out. And then you can start your melon fly once you're out. Um, I dropped for quite a bit then, but normally I could look straight ahead and I'd be able to see stuff behind me, but I'm below the red door, so I need to gain a bit of height. So I'm sprinting forwards right now to slow my melon fly down, which will give me more height, because the faster your melon fly is going, the less height you get. Okay, so once you see the thing um, under you, there's a couple of ways you can get into it. What I normally do is I want to go to this side and then I do the sideways gun fly into the side of it because on this side if you hit your head on that side <coughs> um, you'll hit the trigger to go to the next level it only works on like I think two of the sides for some reason um, the other thing you can do is in the corners of this pipe here you can fall through if you um, like do the uncrouch with the right thumbstick um, and you'll fall through. I don't, yeah, see right now I can see myself falling in. Um, I wanted to demonstrate what I normally did because when I'm above it on the side, I'll just stop the melon fly by uncrouching. So you can stop melon fly like dead in its tracks if you look down and uncrouch, um, like, like straight down 90 degrees uncrouch, the melon fly will just stop instantly and then I drop and once I am level with the finish I sprint to the side towards the that little finish room and then just flick my head to the right just like like that and I'll fly into the finish maybe I'll I'll um I will demonstrate that actually um so looking this way Look up the inventory, buy the gun, open that, grab it, clung glitch, put it in inventory, fist, grab with flap, sprint this way, hand behind me, let go, um, flick my fingers, oh no it didn't work, try again. Same thing, inventory and behind me, sprinting this way. And now I'm out, so. 
there, my both hands out, turn around and melon fly straight like this. Um, going straight will give me faster acceleration, so I'll get up to speed quicker. Don't want to hit that death trigger there. But yeah, another thing you want to basically be lined up with that thing. So you can see the start level, the room where it started, and the um, I'll have to fly back because I'm already past the finish. But lining up the room where you start with that long drop. Um, okay. So flying back, line them up above the red height. So yeah, do that and then boom, to the side. And my head hit the side of the thing. For warehouse, this is the direction you start. Um, yeah, so the normal way for a new game plus speed run is to go this way, B hopping, do a 1x or yeah, two two X if you want, I guess. Do a jump off that as well, and then jump onto this, and then jump over there as well. But um, if that's too tricky to do, you can um, instead jump onto this and just climb up here, stand on this, and then you can run over there. Another thing is, because this is like a bit of a ramp, you can jump while you're on it to do a really big, really tall jump. Like that. Um, but yeah, the fastest way is to just jump onto the green transformer thing and then jump over. Um, you can pull yourself over that as well by the way. Um, for jumping on this thing, because it has a bit of a ramp this way, if you try and jump off going in this direction while you're on this ramp, um, you'll barely get any height. So I want to sort of like be standing on the edge of this middle bit and jumping like facing this way I guess, rather than facing the, that way. And yep. Um, so this is probably the best way to jump over that. Um, the slower you go, the more likely you are to die um, in this section. But yeah, you can go around the other way, but this is the fastest and most likely to live way. And then just like crouch in the corner once you're in here kill an enemy if he got in. Um, yeah, that's all there really is to this level. Stay low so that the enemy is less likely to hit you. Um, yeah. There is a way you can do a fling glitch with the stairs up there, but it's so inconsistent, not going to worry about that. The other way you can do this is with gunfly. Start the level facing to your right up over here, open inventory and buy this gun, it costs 2000 so you need to spam it really quick and do the gun glitch with the SMG. Um, yeah, so you can do the gun glitch just like normal with this gun. It's slightly different but it works basically the same. Um, you need to, because the magazine comes out further, you need to wait for longer um, to do the gun glitch to glitch the mag, um, but yeah, once you've got it, go this way, you can run around there, or a bit faster if you jump over there, because you want to be behind here, facing this way, um, or this is what I do at least, we're going to clip out there by crouching here, if you face this way and crouch, your body's like too deep in this direction to fit, so you just pop out the other side there. But normally, if, if you try it here, you might go up there, which is why I face this direction, and then crouch here. And once you're crouched, um, melon fly isn't going to push you when you're fully crouched, so it's safe to put the gun on your back at this point. 
So yeah, once you're fully crouched, put the gun on your back and turn this way. And once I'm turning that way, I'm going to be sprinting that way as well to pull myself out. And once I go out, um, there is a death trigger pretty low. I can show it right now, I guess. So yeah, good. Like that, sprinting forwards, uncrouch, and then that's how high the death trigger is. So you don't have long to start a melon fly once you're out there. Um, <coughs> so you need to be very confident in starting a melon fly to do that. But yeah, it's like 100% consistent if you know how to start a melon fly. Um, all I'm going to do once I'm out there is right stick up to fully uncrouch and then my gun should already be on my back and then once I'm fully uncrouched, I just, while I'm doing the sprinting in the direction, turn around and crouch, you know, do a 180 in real life. And that'll just start it every time. So jump over here, crouch and go down here, put that on, sprint out the side and turn. Um, sometimes that happens, but if it does, just do it again. Uncrouch, melon fly. And then there's a couple of things over here, which fence there, and then another fence just here. Um, so yeah, watch out for them, go over them or around them. I went around them just then, and then you want to get in this corner, like pretty close, but not too close, otherwise you pop in like this. And if you stay in the corner, um, you'll hit the level end trigger. It goes a little bit lower than here, so you can be like directly under even, um, but not too low, otherwise you'll miss the trigger. If you do go too low, just gain a little bit of height because it goes back like super far. So just gain a bit of height and then you'll load into the next level. So to show this again, Crouching on the back out here, uncrouch, turn around and crouch while sprinting the direction I'm going to start a melon fly. Oh, whoops. I hit the side of the level there, which is something you don't want to do. But normally, yeah, just go here and I fly over them. And then I look slightly up so that I can lose some height because remember, this makes you go faster. And then just stay under here and you hit the level end trigger. Cool. <coughs> so for central, um, we've got another gun fly. Buy this gun. And now you want to go into this room and then clip out through this gap here. Um, yeah, because the gun's on your back, it'll push you out pretty easily if you, um, yeah. Once the gun's on your back, it can push you into this corner and then you just sort of turn around and the gun fly, gun fly will just push you through this wall here. Um, and then you can start gun flying. Another way you can do it is to do a melon fly and just melon fly into that corner and like it consistently takes you out which is slightly faster if you don't lose any speed as you come out of the corner of the room um yeah and from there i'll show you where to go so i'll do the melon fly and crouch a bit in real life turn your head slightly and now i'm out um so Normally what you want to do is fly, I guess, up through this building. This building doesn't have collision. Um, but what I do is fly up there and then, let's see if I can, okay, that took me back in. Um, 
I'll just do it again and show you what I do. Okay, I'm out, do the fly. So I go up here, and then don't touch that room, otherwise it'll load the enemies and your frame rate will drop and you'll fall out of the sky. But go this way, about this high, because that way I'll clear this thing. And you want to be roughly in line with that building over there. And then once you clear this, stop the fly, and you know look down, bump sideways, and you'll hit the side of that room which has the level trigger on it. Um, there's a couple of other ways you can go, like you can go around those big black boxes, um, those two big black boxes like which separate the level. Um, you can also, that level trigger, you can land on top of it, and there's stairs there, um, which I guess are meant to be these stairs, and you just fall down the middle into the area with the trigger. Okay, so next up for tower, you go through here, jump onto, lay across there, and then jump over this, that's a little bit faster, or a slightly faster way as well if you have good super jumps, is to jump from just after this like glowing step about here and grab onto the orange rail up there which looks like a crazy height to jump <coughs> and it is it is a pretty hard jump to do but the stairs ramping up does give you a little bit of extra height i'll try it now oh couldn't quite get it more oh. so i hit my shoulder on those stairs just then i feel like that one probably would have made it is sad. There we go. Um, so grab this and then crouch and you can pull yourself through the middle of that. So once you're here, grab this gun, gun glitch. Um, yeah, come out here and then about here is where you want to start the start flying. Um, you don't want to fly any earlier because otherwise see that big thing up there you'll just get hit that and get stuck. But yeah, I usually do a melon fly here and I'm sprinting forwards right now because I don't want distance, I want height. And now like I've got plenty of height, level triggers right behind me. There. So I went into it. Um, obviously, you know, takes a bit of practice to know where you're going while you're not looking, but it's pretty easy as long as your computer can handle the FPS. Um, yeah, if your FPS drops, then you'll need to keep trying to do the melon fly and it'll keep stopping and you need to do it again, which happens sometimes for me, but most of the time it's fine. Anyway, for Time Tower, there's a fling you can do there, but I don't worry about it because it'll take me too fast sometimes or not far enough. Um, so, there's two ways you can do this level. The first way and the slower way is to go up here. Slightly faster, you can jump on this and, you know, jump over like that. Get out slightly quicker. But grab it right down here as low as you can. Grab one of these balls with it and then jump on the ball and hold it up and it'll make you fly. Back just a little bit to get the hang of it. And then if you fall down here, th that's where the level tr trigger is for the end of this level. Um, I don't know if I clicked that fast enough, but... Okay, I didn't. I'll show you the gunfly way next. Oh yeah, so actually if you're doing that first way, you can do the this thing here, which is hard to get right. It's like your hand needs to be on top of this black thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, crouching down pretty low. 
as low as you can really while you're you know about here um, fully extended if your arms not fully extended by the way I forgot to say this with the last fling um, then it's just going to like waste some distance it'll you know pull this far but that's not going to pull on your body so it's not going to make you fling anyway grab there three times slow-mo and like that um, the actually there was other th one other thing I'll mention when for the fling when you grab it you want to pull your hand behind you um, to give it a little more force um, but yeah that's for the original way for the gun fly way don't do the fling go this way look up open your inventory and then you want to buy this gun here and what we're going to do is you want to step over the corner of this so the elevator starts rising if you don't do that it doesn't rise so do that then while you're waiting for it do the gun glitch here and now we're going to go underneath there remember there's a death trigger just down there so we don't go too low otherwise we'll die but go under that and then there's another um, collision barrier um, just behind that area there which will block us from going that way but once we're down there we want to go up and over that collision barrier um, yeah so if you're doing melon fly you just I'll just run off the edge as I'm falling down I put the gun on my back I keep like my legs out extended so that the melon fly doesn't start um, until I'm ready for it to and then once I'm like you know level with these pillars here I'll turn around do the metal fly which it'll hit that barrier behind there which makes you go up so I'll show that now I did it too early but oh, doing it again okay so you can see this is where the barrier starts and this is where it stops what I'm standing on right now maybe I'll try showing that again Oop. okay this gun's pretty cheap so you don't need to um, put too much ammo into it Right there and see that right there is the edge of the thing that I was in the um, invisible barrier so once you cleared that you just you know pull the gun out so it don't stop you you can look down and um, uncrouch fully to stop it from flying as well and now you have this once again you can't press it too early otherwise it'll soft lock so just wait till you hear the music or you know two seconds or whatever and press it. The dungeon, you'll start facing this way, but you want to turn 180 in real life so that you're looking at this and then sprint at it and it, while you get here push forwards really quickly like that in on the side of the brick so that you know will pull it out like that. From there um, crouch and lift your head in here, spring forward still, and you can fall down there. B hop here, zoom so up onto this. So easiest way to get through the gate, just chuck three ammo clips on and the gate will open. You can just go under. Um, slightly faster is to clip through the gate, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Um, you can grab up here, crouch, and then turn your head that way, and you want to stay like, as far as you can into the corner. You can, you know, do the same thing but not holding it, do a jump up here, and then turn your head and crouch. Um, I'm not showing them right now because if I clip through there I'm not going to be able to get back. 
Um, yeah, or you can run through, tilt your head slightly, and then turn it like this while you're crouching here, and rotate your body through there. Um, but yeah, they're not completely consistent. Maybe if you practice it, they would be. But yeah, there's, it only saves like one second at most. So yeah, probably stick to that. But that's how you do it. <coughs> um, oh, facing the wrong way. Um, so for arena, fastest way is to just do a super jump either there or there and just, you know, just jump two times some height and just, you'll be able to jump onto that. Um, if you don't quite make it, you can grab one of these with your hands and pull yourself over. Or if you can't really super jump at all, you can, like, you know, I guess climb up this. Like, climb up like that and get over, I guess. Um, you can even grab one of these crates. Be careful not to break it, and that'll give you some extra height. But yeah, you probably don't want to worry about that, just like, you know, get good at super jumping. Um, another thing I'll mention, if you have low ceiling, so you can't really jump much in real life, um, once again, setting your height lower in the settings will let you be able to, you know, make the game think you're jumping in real life when you're actually just uncrouching. And then when you, if you actually do jump in real life, you want to use slow-mo. So I jumped in real life, and now I'm on the ground in real life. And then while I'm in the air in the game, but on ground in real life after my jump, put my hands up and grab the thing. Because your real life jump, you know, you'll jump and then land before you've landed in the game. So you can now put my hands up like that. But yeah, if you do a good two times slow-mo super jump, should be able to get all the way onto this. Then from here, either there or here, jump over that thing. And be careful not to fall down there because that's pretty annoying. You'll be kind of stuck. Oh, I used slow-mo there, you don't need to do that. And then B-hop to the finish. So throne room, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can climb up there, up that pipe and over to get to the button, or you can climb this way. Um, this way is slightly faster. Um, if you do this jump thing. Um, so it's a little bit tricky, it requires a little bit of movement skill, but do a 1x jump onto this thing and then from here you jump and grab that do a 1x slow-mo again jump and grab that square up there so I'll show it again if I can do it um, I don't know why that super jump didn't work just then and it jumped too late. Um, for jumping there, it's actually a little bit annoying. You, need, you do need to leave it to the very last second, otherwise you'll hit that pole above you. Okay, that was better, but not great. Um, I barely got any height for my second jump. Normally it lands about here. And then you just climb up here. And for maximum climbing speed, the way you should climb, not like this, but with two hands at once, you can pull your body up very quick. So you want to 
sort of be doing that. So, if I show it on the other wall with the alternate route, two hands and like doing this. Not exactly what I'm doing now, I'm just trying to show the movement. I'm barely moving right now, but that's basically what you want to do, except pull all the way down and very quickly swing your hands up in real life to, yeah, grab. Um, okay. <laughs> Why is this happening? Okay, that's that's what it, how it's meant to go. And then you can grip this part here, pull yourself on, and to get up there, you can do a jump onto this, like that, or I usually jump onto the second one. It doesn't really make a difference; either one's fine. Oop. But obviously, keep going. Push the button. Put your hands here. I don't even jump here. I just pull myself up like that while crouching. To get over there. And yeah, push the doors open. Do B hops in between. Now for the king, go to three times slow-mo when you get here and try and grab just the crown. If you're too close to him, it'll grab his head. But if you're just the right distance away, it'll grab the crown. Too far you grab nothing, obviously. So too close, head, too far, nothing. But right about here, where your tip of your fingers touch the crown, you'll grab just the crown and it'll come off his head and kill him. Usually. Sometimes you need to do it a couple more times. So you go through here, grab the battery. This is pretty normal. Um, yeah, I usually jump over this table. From here you can grab that. Grab that, throw that. Um, wait till you're like, you know, about here. Because clicking this back then, like nothing's going to happen to the button. It's not really any point. Just wait till here, then you can press it. And once you pressed it, start walking backwards. And what you want to grab is, like don't aim it at the bottom of this. You want to aim it at the pipe on the side. Like see, I grabbed the one on my right. Um, but yeah, that's what you're actually grabbing. So that's what you want to aim at to properly get it. So yeah. Put that in. Run back like so you're close enough around here. Do that and then you come down here. Now to fly with this when you're about here I'm holding the gun sideways. Grab it. Turn it around. Um, and then jump on top of it. There's, oh, I'm going to die if I stand here too much longer. Okay, whatever, I'll do it from here. Okay, so there's two ways you can fly on this, a fast way and a slow way. Um, from here you can aim it down like this, grab it, and fly off. Um, you may want to crouch very slightly like this to make sure that you don't go over this lip and fall off. So this is the easy and slow way to do it. The faster way is to grab this orb on the back first. So you want to keep the orb here. If you pull it too far, remember it's going to like do this thing where it launches things. So grab the orb and do the same thing, crouching slightly, grab it underneath you, keep the orb in this area of the gun, but don't like accidentally push the gun. And then, yeah, take off. 
So if I might need to fly to the start again, I guess. Oh yeah, also you need to keep watch out for those. Uh... Alright. So this will start over here. The poles are right there. I usually go to the left so that I can angle to the right when I get to the door. Just grab it like that. Angle to the left. Go. And I try and not fly too high because I want to be at an angle upwards when I get to the door. So that when I hit that, that was a bad angle that I did just then. But I want, yeah, to be flying upwards and straight that way. Hit that thing and then I'll get launched all the way into this room where from here, like around here, you're able to hit the skip button with the gun. And that's it. Um, yeah, hope that helps.